It's been a long time coming, but my house is finally getting built. Let's take a look inside. This is a monolithic dome. Well, no, right now we're looking at a garage, but the house is a monolithic dome constructed by South Industries in Idaho. 2,700 and change square feet inside. Oh, by the way, the temperature inside is incredibly stable. So this will be the main entrance into the living room that my local general contractor, Dave Clark, at Christensen Construction, he figured out how to accommodate for a wood-burning stove, I'm trying to think of the name. Oh, Defiant Series. Defiant Series, who, who makes that? But um, I won't have a fireplace per se, but a wood-burning cooking stove, in case the uh, power goes out. Family bedrooms, three of them, window in each one. Kitchen area. Oh, well, the um, family bathroom right there. Kitchen, I mean kitchen, shower. Kitchen here, guest bathroom there. Back door, we'll go there. Master bedroom right here, master bath, master shower. My office will be here. The walls on this right now are about seven inches thick. That is shotcrete over, or rather under, depending on your perspective, urethane foam insulation. piano will go there. Dave and his crew will build knee-high shelving around the perimeter, except where the wood-burning stove goes. Vermont Castings, that's the name of the company, Defiant Series. Nathan and Ben South and Nathan's kids and some neighbor kids worked on this along with a couple of adult workers. Took them about a month to put this up and get all the construction done. Next week, I believe, Dave will be here with his crew to begin work. Oh, about uh, thermal properties. So when I got here this morning, earlier this morning, it was 59 degrees outside, about 70 degrees inside. Right now, it's over 70 degrees outside, and in here, it's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Yesterday afternoon, it was 84 degrees outside, and about 70 degrees inside. So, the thermal properties of this structure are very nice, very good. But the county doesn't understand, the county regulators don't understand monolithic domes. They, of course, don't count the four inches of concrete as having any thermal insulating properties. 
They only count the urethane foam. They don't take into consideration that basically this is an airtight structure. The only holes in the structure are the ones that are put there. Windows, doors, fence, smokestack, stovepipe rather, chimney pipe. So temperature fluctuations are minimal already, but the county regulators don't get that. And so in all four of the domes, they require an additional four inches of urethane foam to be sprayed on the ceiling, going down to just above where the doors and windows will be in all four domes. That will add about an additional $5,000 of unnecessary expense to the structure and a degree of ugliness too. It will not be attractive. The two bedroom domes and the kitchen dome. The kitchen dome is um, not a full dome, it's only 300 square feet. The other three domes are 800 square feet. But I decided that I wanted an attic in these three domes for storage. County regulators came back and said, oh, that's not optional. You must have those. We will allow you to not have an attic in the living room dome, but you must have four inches of urethane foam sprayed on the ceiling in all four domes. The three with the attics, it won't be visible, but it will be visible here. I haven't decided what I'll do to mitigate the ugliness of that, but I'll save that for later after the house is mostly done. Keep expenses to a minimum as much as possible. Oh, there's a yellow and... Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Where'd it go? Is that it right there? Yeah, there's little yellow birds. They kind of migrate through here. By the way, I rented a dumpster from Ultimate Dumpsters. Paid a little over $1,800 for 45 days. On about day 41, as they count the days, I let them know that they could come and pick up the dumpster on, as they count the days, day 46. On the morning of day 44, they came and got the dumpster. So I got 43 and a half days for my 45 day rental. I called them up, said, hey, what's going on? They checked and said, oh yeah, our records say it's supposed to be picked up on this other day, not the day that it was taken away. We don't know why it was taken away. We'll escalate this to management. Never heard back. Meanwhile, I still had construction trash accumulating, and I called again. I said, I want what I paid for. I said, oh, we're refunding you. Really? How much? Well, $30. Wait a minute. 18 and some 
1800 and some odd dollars divided by 45 does not come out to $30. It comes out to 41 and I only had the dumpster for 43 and a half days. And I don't want a refund. I want what I paid for. We'll escalate to management. So far I have not heard anything. I have not seen any refund. Hitting my credit card. These phone calls were all last week. Uh, there's Gray. A couple of domestic rabbits got away from a um, neighbor and um, have been reproducing. So, a couple of them are fairly tame and will come right up and hi, Gray. Hello, Gray. But their offspring are a little bit more feral. That is an offspring. <laughs> but um, at this point, I consider ultimate dumpsters to be the ultimate shysters, the ultimate ripoff. That's my experience. And I recommend against having anything to do with them. Well, this is July 2022, almost August, almost August. Oh, hello, Gray. And, uh, what you want, what you want, <laughs> what you want. <laughs> okay, well, you're prettier than I am, but I'm going to turn the camera around. So, assuming that the country doesn't break up into civil war, the economy doesn't crash, a year from now, Nathan South and Ben South and the kids will come back and put a chain shell on the dome. What that entails is putting a chain link fencing attaching it to the outside of the dome all over and then spraying a scratch coat and then coming back a few weeks later to apply another coat I'm just looking at gray here and then coming back a few weeks after that to apply a nice smooth coat and um, that adds another couple of inches to the thickness so it'd be about nine inches thick at that point the wall Personally, I'd like it to be like two feet thick, <sighs> preparing for the zombie apocalypse. But um, that'll add another couple of inches to it. And at that point, the structure would be rated to last about 500 years with minimal structural maintenance. So I don't know why these are not calm. Well, I shouldn't say that. Um, the regulators make it very difficult to get these structures permitted and the banks of course don't do mortgages I'm having to pay for this all out of pocket the dome itself the construction of the dome that I just showed you that's two hundred and fifty five thousand dollars and uh, with the markets churning sideways right now consolidating in trade jargon the um, my money is a little tight. I think I've got enough to finish the inside and make it uh, habitable so I can get moved in out of my apartment and moved into here. Start uh, landscaping the place, plant garden, maybe put in a greenhouse. But um, I'm in what is considered a blue part of a blue state. Now, folks talk about a peaceful divorce. I'm for that. The problem is that uh, we don't, except for Hawaii, we don't really have blue states. We've got blue cities and red states that are being dragged around by the nose by the blue cities that are in them. So here in the state of Washington, we've got Seattle, Tacoma. I live in Olympia, which is very progressive, but that's 
most of the county, oh, by the way, most of the counties where Seattle and Tacoma are, are red. It's just the cities and the immediate surroundings that are blue, that are progressive. People's progressive paradise where homeless abound. There's hundreds of homeless people living in this area. But uh, I was seriously considering doing like a lot of people and fleeing to a better place to live, like Texas or Florida, someplace like that. Or maybe even just to the next county south of here, which is red. But um, Michael G. Michael Hopf, who coined the phrase, bad times make strong men, strong men make good times, good times make weak men, weak men make bad times. Um, in the series that he wrote, in which he coined that phrase, um, he had the capital of the new nation of Cascadia right where I live, Olympia. Oh, Gray's coming over. I waved my hand and now he's coming over. But um, I got to thinking, if we all run away, then they win. So this property has been in my family for about 98 years. On the indigenous side of the family, we've been here for who knows how many hundreds, thousands of years. The first pioneers to come here had some of my ancestors in them. Michael T. Simmons and George Bush, not the president. And um, some of my ancestors were members of that party. We've been here a long time, so I'm not running away, I'm making a stand. The progressives will lose, but um, they're going to make life miserable first. Anyway, switch back to Gray here. Hello, Gray. That's all for now. Rod Van Mecklen, Olympia, Washington. Signing off for now.